Middle school? Nothing beats Goat Soda! <laughs> this is my poem, November 27th. I was sitting on one of the tall black chairs I've hated since we got them two years ago because everyone knows what doesn't go with granite. <laughs> my dad just finished making my favorite type of pancakes, the ones that are almost cooked but just a little gooey on the inside, with exactly 13 chocolate chips that are fully melted because otherwise I won't accept them. My stepmom and him were debating about whether or not Trump was actually a good president. And I was sitting on my phone Snapchatting people gross pictures of me stuffing my face with food as if I'd been starved for days. At least, that's how I wish it had been. Actually, it was November 27th, my fifth day of being 13 and my third day on suicide watch. My cell was like a cave that had not been entered for centuries, cold and rusted. My favorite nurse was harassing my door because I was sitting on the toilet and she couldn't just walk in on me. She unlocked my door and let me out for the first time in three hours. I had to go out to the cafeteria with padded walls and eat a dinky meal that wouldn't even fill my stomach for five minutes. My two best friends were sitting alone at a table arguing who, about who was more likely to commit suicide for, first when they got out, and I was stuck listening to them fighting the urge to break my spoon in half and slip my wrist again. My dad called. It was his birthday. He was turning 42, and I wasn't even there to sing to him. All I said was, fine, yes, and okay. Then hung up, thanking God I was done putting that fake happy tone in my voice. Afterwards, my seven cellmates and I were shackled together and herded to room 207 for its bug-filled Berber carpet for group therapy. They made us watch a meditation video, and our objective was to tap into our inner self and realize the good in life. But what the text didn't realize was that it only gave me more time to rummage the house for my dad's gun. My dad, my day, most days, I just went straight to my room after group and began punching the wall until I could no longer feel my cephalic vein carry blood through my fingers. But once I was over the feeling of the drywall on my hands, I lay down on my bed that was like a coffin, trapping me with sandpaper sheets, and I tried to dream of the vanilla cake I could be eating right then instead of the lingering taste of a rotten apple. I tried my best to dream of me with a big smile on my face in a time in my life where every time I heard the word cut, I didn't automatically think of my wrist. During our final group therapy of the day, we had to go around the table telling our happies and crappies. All of us said, happy. I'm hopefully leaving soon. Crappy. I haven't left yet. But thank God they still gave us candy because without something to bite on other than my tongue, I don't know how I would have survived without telling them to stop wasting their time because obviously we were all lost causes. <laughs>